This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm going to be playing with Mech Knights yet again. This is a new archetype that comes out in Extreme Force. Although I'm not necessarily playing it to be as the deck comes TCG League a lot of Extreme Force, I am playing a couple of cards that we are not going to have access to unless they get imported in Extreme Force. Uh, at this point we have no idea if they are going to get imported and we don't really know what all of our OCG imports are going to be, but there is still that slim chance. Uh, but mainly Security Dragon and Summon Sorceress. Summon Sorceress being something I don't really use that often, but Security Dragon being the key piece of the Grinder Golem combo to go into a one card Skull Deet, uh, which is what I'm trying to basically do with this deck. I made this deck as degenerate as I possibly could with as many starter cards as I could, uh, and that's with the Grinder Golems, the Gofu, the Venuses, uh, these being as many starter cards as I could fit into the deck. Uh, that are good quality starter cards that let me turbo into things like Skull Deet to reset my hand, dig for things like more Jack Knights, or excuse me, Mech Knights, uh, dig for the spell and trap support, and stuff like that. Now for this video I am going to do it a little bit different though, since Mech Knights don't necessarily focus on any extra deck based strategy, uh, it's very easy for me to do this, is that if I have plays that are conducive and good that don't involve me using these OCG cards of Security Dragon and Summon Sorceress while doing a Grinder Golem combo, then I will not use those cards. So I will try to play the deck in those forms of combos and sequences as they are TCG legal. But if I need to use them to win, or if like I only had Grinder Golem and nothing else that like makes my play good to go into a Skull Deet, then I will utilize those cards. But basically, Grinder Golem plus Lavender Dusk or uh, Azura Sky allows you to do a TCG legal play with Grinder Golem to go into Skull Deet and then, you know, let you dig and do stuff like that. And it is pretty good card economy wise because, you know, you summon your Lavender Dusk, you banish itself, search for uh, Azura Sky, summon Azura Sky underneath your Akashic Magician and underneath your on the Grinder Golem on your opponent's side of the field and you get a search for Azura Sky. So, like, it's still the same sort of cards. You'll end up with the same number of cards overall. You just burned two of your special summons, but your Lavender Dusk will be coming back during your next standby phase and stuff like that. Like, it, it works out to be the same card economy-wise, so if I'm capable of doing that, I will do that for the sake of this video. And in those instances, the deck will be operating under a TCG legal status. But if I can't do that economically, or I need to use this card to win the game, then I will. So I'll try to hold myself to it. It's like it's like a little mini game within the mini game of Yu-Gi-Oh. But anyway, with that said, I'm just going to not waste too much more time in this little deck portion of this video, and let's just jump straight into the first game, and let's hope we can get some good ones, shall we? So if you're wondering about the headphones, these are a pair of Viper 330s, I think. They're relatively cheap, but they sound pretty damn good uh, for the quality that I was looking for. Uh, and they're really comfortable. Uh, they're around the ear headphones, and they're really comfortable. They have a microphone built into them with an on-off switch on it. They have internal volume control. Basically, I just got really tired of not being able to hear the game audio. Uh, because not being able to hear the, uh, not being able to hear the game audio, uh, basically really heavily, like, affects my understanding of when things are specifically happening. Because you'd think it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but that little, that little tiny Q, uh, I'm gonna hold down S, uh, so it doesn't give away the fact that I have this Ash Blossom. I was frantically right-clicking before I remembered I could just click S. Um, but basically, like, those little Qs... Especially since I look away a lot to look over at the webcam and to look at my uh, at my recording software to make sure everything is running smoothly, uh, these little cues like of these things happening, these actions taking place, uh, they redirect my attention to the game, which is pretty important. I'm playing against World Chalice. This makes me so pleased. I love this deck. All right, I'm gonna stop holding down S now because my opponent could leave himself vulnerable to this Ash Blossom. I have Grinder Golem plus Lavender Dusk. Um. So, let's see. Let's see how this goes. Uh, if I'm able to Ash Blossom the World Legacy World Chalice, that's really good for me. Um, okay, he's playing around Ash. He has another card in his hand that he can summon. Good. Um, I've got Grinder Golem plus Lavender Dusk. I've got a few things capable to me. He's got a very strong play with Venus, just World Legacy World Chalice plus Guard Dragon. Uh, he gets to search. He gets to summon Lee plus a Vanilla out of his deck. He's playing Chosen. Um... And then this Lee can search for a World Chalice Guard Dragon. Uh, damn it, I should have held S. I never want you never want to Ash Blossom the Lee. Um, I should have been holding down S to mask that I have this, like to, to not give away that information. 
but actually that would look like a ghost ogre as well because it's a face-up monster activating its effect. But anyway, uh, carrying on, uh, these headphones were really cheap. They were only like $30 headphones, um, and I just I needed something. I needed something that wasn't something that hurt my ears because I have a really big head, and I've, it's very hard for me to find a pair of headphones that I love. Um, because they, I can wear them for hours on end without uh, my head hurting because I have a really big head. I have a really big everything. My body is disproportionately large for being 5'11". I'm built like a linebacker, but like I've got huge hands, I've got size 15 shoes, like it's, it's kind of a problem. But specifically the head. The head is really big. If you've ever met me in person, one thing you've probably noticed about me is that my head is actually just massive. Uh, so finding a pair of actual like proper headphones uh, that are really good audio quality and then also feel good on my head itself um, and don't cause any pain or whatever, uh, it's really hard to come by. And so I found these and tried them out and I really like them. So that's why I'm wearing these headphones. Um, I could probably get something that costed a little bit more, but I wasn't trying to invest a lot of money into something. Uh, I just needed some headphones, but they sound really good. And the mic quality is actually pretty damn decent as well. I tested it out. I'm not using it for this recording. Oh, he has the Exodius 2? Whoa! This man is just a legend. If he doesn't game me, if he doesn't just kill me outright, if, if he lets me play this game, then he fucked up. <laughs> um, which right now, yeah, use those into Proxy Dragon. Um, and so now, it basically screams to me that you're going to be able to mask the Ningirsu from this Ash Blossom. Otherwise, you did something horribly wrong. Um, okay, good. Very good. All right. Uh, so now the thing is, is that I've held this Ash Blossom for so long that the only thing I'm really going to be able to use this Ash Blossom on... Well, there's no ideal time to use the Ash Blossom anyway. Well, I knew he had another monster in his hand. He, he resolved Lee. I'm being stupid. Uh, he shuffled back Guard Dragon without using it, so that's not a line of play that he has access to. If he has Kyoto Waterfront, I'll be able to use Ash Blossom on the Kyoto, and I need to remember he might be fearing a Ghost Ogre right now because I did have a response window that popped up on his Lee activating its effect, which is either Ash Blossom or Ghost Ogre. The thing is, is that if he uh, goes into Kyoto Waterfront and uses its effect to search first uh, before making something like Trigate Wizard, I can Ash Blossom that and then he doesn't get the Gamma Seal. Uh, and that's going to be important. That's going to be a very key thing because if he's able to make Trigate Wizard at all, um, then that's going to be, uh, that's, he's, he should be able to make Trigate Wizard, if we're being honest. He's, he's doing the proper motions. This person might be somebody who's watched my videos. Um, like, he's doing everything currently in a proper ori in a proper order. And he's also playing the level 3, which is not super popular. Um, it's not super popular for people to be playing the level 3. Uh, so many people just play the level 4 and they try to turbo into Baguska or, uh, or Nat Beast or something and like the level 3 is just better overall. Link Spider. Odd. What an odd play to do there. You Did you think you had an extra, have an extra Link? You use this, use this, bring back your Ningirsu and then link these into Trigate uh, and then, oh, you've actually, you've actually caught yourself in a bad situation, uh, because you don't have the guard dragon. Hmm. You might have fucked up. You might have fucked up, big boy, and that might be what gets me to, that, that might, that might be what lets me get you. Um, okay. So, let's see, right here, unless you have a vanilla in your hand. If you have a vanilla in your hand, you're able to, you were able to, um... Uh, my opponent has run out of time. All right. He he messed around for too long. Unfortunate duelist, but we take those. We take anything we get here. And it was kind of fun to... I, I've said some things that are worthwhile keeping in the video. It's unfortunate. I don't even know how I'd play out my turn. Um, if he was doing a Trigate Wizard play here, he would have to... I'm not sure how he would be able to establish a Trigate. That's the unfortunate thing, is I think that he really actually did fuck himself over um, by not doing things um, in a little bit of different structuring. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what the, that structuring is because I wasn't playing his cards and I have no idea what these three cards in his hand are, so I'm just not going to waste too much time on it and let's just go straight into another game. Man, that really irritates me too. I kind of, I wanted to see what I could have like done to his board because he only was going to end on Trigate and Firewall for one. 
Um, I feel like with the five cards I had that I could have at least tried to break his board, especially since one of them was Grinder Golem, um, that kind of makes me sad. Uh, the fact that he just ran out of time. But whatever, man. You 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 had to play faster. And I think he messed up. I think he Exodius prematurely. I think that's the point at which he messed up. I wasn't paying a huge amount of attention to what he was doing. Um, because I was running through my own combos in my mind. Um, but like I feel like the Exodius is where he potentially screwed up. Uh, so this is what I was saying earlier in the deck portion. Is that since I've got this. Um, this is better for me to do, well not better for me to do, but it's something I can do, um, which, uh, which makes it, um, to where I don't have to use Security Dragon, so I can play this as a TCG legal deck, uh, that's the point I'm going for here, but unfortunately it makes me, forces, it forces me to put my Golem back up here, which I'd prefer to put it in like some other column so that I could, you know, like set this and summon this, but... It's still whatever. It's still very possible for me to do plays because of the fact that Skull Deed exists. Um, and it also, like, putting a putting a monster in my graveyard sets up for, um, for like, a True Depths uh, play if I draw into it, which I have not, strangely enough. I'll get rid of the Ash Blossom. I'll keep the Max C. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the Scars. Uh, well, no, I'm going to get rid of one of the Whispers. And I can special this. I can special this. Special this. Um, I can special one of them via Skull Deed's effect. Um, e yeah, I'm going to just put this back. Um, I'm going to summon the Cobalt Depths via its own effect. Then use Skull Deed to special another one in a different zone. Uh, and then I'm just going to set it with this Whispers. Um, and then hide behind the Max C like a coward. Uh, but so, yeah, I can activate this, use its effect, move it over here. Um, then I can use this Skull Deet effect to special this one from my hand. I'm specialing them in the zone Skull Deet points too, specifically so that they do all get boosts. Um, that is something that I feel is kind of important, you know, make your shit bigger. Uh, but otherwise, uh, these can move around. I could make World Scars, but there's no real reason to. I can get a search here and summon another monster. Um, which I mean I could very well do, and it's actually probably the correct thing to do to move this over well no it makes no sense to do so because that's still be, no that's still be three monsters uh, but this gives me more flexibility because I can move each of these around once so I think it's better to keep these because if I did this if I banish this I would just get like another cobalt depths that I can't summon or I would get the red dude that I just summon um, and use to pop the grinder golem which I mean is you know meritful in its own right um, you know what, yeah, well, let's let's just see how it goes. Let's see how it happens, because then it starts preserving resources, because then next turn I can banish again, and uh, and then things just start working out. Um, I start snowballing advantage um, this way. It gives me less pinpoint negation, but it gives me, you know, deals with this, so I don't have to deal with it, even though Whisper already inherently deals with it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, uh, fuck it, right? That's, that's how this works, alright? That's how this entire situation goes. Um, but so I've got these. This can move around. Uh, this is already in the center, which is really good because people just... They plop their spells down in the center. Um, they don't even play around the fact that this archetype has access to these kind of cards. Uh, Magician's Right Hand. Um, that card's not real. I don't care about that card. I have like five spells in my entire deck. <laughs> I don't care about this card. Um, yeah, it's like two scars. It's literally like six. It's two of the field spell, two trade in, an upstart goblin, and a soul charge. No, two key. There's eight. I forgot about the key. <laughs> um, but so now this is over here. Uh, Altergeist. Altergeist. Um, what does this even do? Uh, Meluseek. This card can attack directly. Target a card your opponent controls sends to the graveyard. That's kind of powerful. Um, send it to the graveyard. If this card is sent from the oh, if it's sent from the field of the graveyard, you yeah, had an altar guys. All right. Well, in order to preserve this man's legacy, I'll just banish him and search for blue sky because you've already put two in a column. I just get to search two next turn. Free. Um. 
Like, I'm just doing that because I can't activate that in damage step when this would be triggering its effect. Um, so, like, there's there's no reason for me not to just go ahead and shotgun that just so that it preserves it. Because then that comes back next turn. One of the Cobalt Depths come back next turn. Um, I don't know why you're dealing with that and not Cobalt Depths. But hey, man, whatever. So I've got two monsters that come back next turn. I've got the Lavender Dusk and the Cobalt Depths that comes back. Oh, we're going to get a Search. That's cool. Didn't even think that that was a level 1 and that that was an interaction. What is this? Uh, Altergeist Kunkuri. When your opponent's monster declares an attack, if you control an Altergeist card, you can special summon this card from your hand if you do negate that attack. Um, if this card is special summoned, you can target face-up monster. But he doesn't control an Altergeist card. That seems like it does nothing. Um, so which one? This is Cobalt Depths. Okay, so Cobalt Depths comes back over here. Uh, and then this guy... Comes, why did I put him there? F thank God I can move him. Like, why did I put him there? Of all of the things for me to do, I did it so I could just bait this Ghost Ogre low-key. Like, there's no way that you can tell me that he doesn't have a Veiler or a Ghost Ogre in his hand with, with that kind of a response window popping up. Alright, well, we'll special summon this. This will get two searches. Um... Or it'll get Ghost Ogre or Veilers. I'm thinking probably Veiler. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Alright. So now, uh, I can ch chain this. Um, but I sh still shouldn't get Surges. I do get Surges. The game state remembered the column it was in. Weird. I don't know if that's right. <laughs> I don't think that's the way that one's supposed to work. Well, wait, no, because, yeah, it doesn't have to specifically point to his zone. But wait. Why did I only get one? What? That? Oh, I searched for this. Okay, so, yeah, so this doesn't resolve because it's not in the column. I was searching for this. I confused myself for a second. I searched one card, not three. All right. So, summon this. Um, I've got True Depths, which is powerful. Who oh, shit. Yeah, it's powerful. Um, I can special this Max C from my hand if I want to, but really don't think I do. Um, uh, I think I just set this and start attacking, yeah? I think that's how this works. Um, that monster's attack becomes zero, so I'll attack it with this. Because I'd be... I've got three Cobalt Depths on the field. I don't care if one of them goes to zero. <laughs> I really don't want my Skulldee to go to zero, though. And whichever one goes to zero, I'll just banish it with Lavender Dust next turn to get another search. Um, yeah, I'll attack directly with it, sure. Um, this is game, though, isn't it? This is four monsters on the field that both have a two at the start of their attack stat. So that should be game. That's the theory that I've got. And I've got Whisper, too. Um, I could just damage step an extra thousand. <laughs> Ha 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 Alright. Well, cool. So, we'll attack for this, and then we'll attack with Skull Deet, and then that's game. Okay. So, I'll try to fit one more game into this video, because this is actually the first game that I've actually played. So, even though this might be a longer video, I'm going to fit a third one in. Uh, this one was a weird one, though. I, I don't know. If this is probably not the best Altergeist deck that I've ever seen. You played around my card, but by putting a card that literally does nothing. <laughs> um... That's so bad. That's so bad. I'm pretty sure this is not a proper Altergeist deck. It's a That's an archetype that I should probably look into. I don't know what any of the cards actually do, or how it plays, other than the fact that Vrains has shown me a little bit of how the deck plays. That's, that's My extent of knowledge of how Altergeist plays is watching Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains and seeing the deck be played there. That's really bad. So I should probably look into the archetype. It might be something really cool that I might want to play. But anyway, I'm going to get a third game, just so that this video gets a little bit extra padded in length. Alright, so this is going to be the last game for this video, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping this ends up being something where my opponent just doesn't misplay and leave. Um, oh, my opponent won Rock Paper Scissors and said, you go first. What a duelist. Alright. I'm going to activate this. I'm not worried about... Okay, well. Um, I'll get my two tokens. Scars is like the worst card in my deck. This field spell is literally garbage. This field spell is... A... I literally never use it. This card just needs to be not in my deck. Um, this card is literally the worst card in the entire list, um, if I'm being honest with you. Every time I draw it, I'm like, cool. The first <laughs> the first thing that goes through my mind is, cool, that's a card I'm instantly putting back with Skull Deep. 
<laughs> that's, a, that's literally exactly what runs through my mind. Um, okay, so, going to Akashic Magician here. Uh, Akashic Magician, yes, okay, so I did not fall victim to any Ghost Ogre shenanigans. I'm going to summon these tokens, I'm going to summon the Grinder Golem over in another column now. Um, and then I'm going to go into my Security Dragon and bounce it. And then I'm going to use Akashic to dig for True Depths, and we'll be good off. So I don't have access to uh, Lavender Dusk or um, don't have access to Lavender Dusk or to uh, Azura Sky, so I don't have access into any of that special shit that uh, that lets me um, that lets me do the play without using Security Dragon. Like I said, if I have to use the Security Dragon play, I'm going to use the Security Dragon play. Um, in the next bandless bye bye robot? I mean, maybe. Who knows? I don't think so. I think you could be playing Ghost Ogre and Valor in your list. Let's see, True Depths. Uh, where's my keyboard? There it is. True Depths of the World Legacy. That is the card I want to dig for. Uh, Shine Ball, Trade In, Scars, and Azur. Didn't hit shit. Alright, well then. We'll special these. Boink. Um,. And then we get the Link Karibo, we go into Skull Deep, and then we put back cards, and then we have Soul Charge. So milling that Azur Sky is actually really good. Um, let's see. Uh, if this card is normal, especially summoned from the hand. Okay, so it has to be summoned from the hand to get its search effect. You know what I was checking. I was checking if I could Soul Charge it back and get a search. Um, Alright. You go back. You go back, and I guess the Ash Blossom, honestly, um, I think the Ash is what goes back, yeah, maybe, or no, this goes back, I get to search it, uh, so these there, uh, so now I can Soul Charge for these back, um, literally, I get a Soul Charge for five, this is kind of ignorant, um, I can extra link my opponent, <laughs> I'm going to, Soul Charge! Uh, we'll go one, uh, well no I can't extra link him, I don't have any things that point sideways. Sadness. Okay, so I'll summon this, I'll summon this. Um, I'm gonna be making another Skull Deep, so I just need things with different names. Um, so we'll do this, we'll do this, this Firewall can bounce a card to my hand, so that's good. Uh, that's going under the Skull Deep. And then, uh, what other card do I want? I don't think it matters. I'm only gonna Soul Charge for, I'm gonna Soul Charge for four. Uh, yeah, so I'll just, I'll get these four. This, this is all that matters. Um, so we'll, no! <laughs> I didn't pay attention to what was up here. Fuck, okay, well I guess I don't get the free firewall dragon bounce. Um, rip and piece me. <sighs> Sometimes you just suck at this game, don't you? I'm talking to myself, for obvious reasons. Well, I could make Skull Deed over here, and keep the firewall loaded. Hell yeah, that's how we'll do this. Hold on, first, we're gonna use this effect before I before I dumb up and forget uh, to special this. And now, <laughs> now we'll go into the Skull Deep. Almost forgot about that one for a second. Uh, so we'll do Skull Deep over here. Now it's co-linked with the Firewall. Um, I could use this Firewall Dragon's effect to special a monster from my hand, but I'll make it chain link one, so it, if I draw into like Venus, then it works! Okay, that's not Venus. This goes back. Um, I think Ash goes back because I've got effect negation, so I don't really worry about it. And one of these goes back. Yeah. Uh, the Lavender Dusks. I, I keep the Lavender Dusks in my deck at like all times. Um, so now I can summon this. Uh, Skull Deep gives the boost. I can activate this, banishing this to pop the Grinder Golem so it doesn't have just free shit. Um, and now this Skull Deep can activate, summoning this from my hand, and from here, uh, looks pretty good to me. Uh, do I have any more of my shit in the grave? I do not, uh, but that's fine. Uh, I've got this that deals with something, and these all deal with something. We'll, we'll go with this. This is what works for me. Does it work for you? Because it works for me. Um, so, let's see, I'm just, 
I'm just really trying to get this video over and done with so that I can edit it and then start filming another one because I want videos that are constantly going up over the weekend while I'm gone at ARG Orlando. If you're at ARG Orlando and you watch my videos, then definitely, uh, what is this? Spiral Flame Strike. Well, we'll just, uh, we'll just, uh, whisper and we'll put it on the Cobalt Depths because that's what I want to stay on the board the most. Um, what does this even do? Uh, add in your hand a level 7 autoized monster from your deck. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's not read my cards! You're playing autoized Buster Blader. Let's not read. My card flipped face up, and your card got negated. Very clearly, there's something you need to work on. Very clearly. And you're bitching about Grinder Golem? Now I'm just angry. You complained about Grinder Golem. You said bye bye robot, as if you were like, I know everything about this card and I hate it. But meanwhile, you don't read cards. You just played a card into the zone. I mean, I could have. No, you had an out. You could have played your Emblem of the Dragon Destroyer over here. And I can physically not move my card there. And so it gets you your Buster Blade. What an actual buster. This is the kind of shit I'm talking about. This is the kind of shit I was talking about in the Grinder Golem video I made. People will bitch about Grinder Golem. And they just won't be reading cards. I play this card, right? Listen. I Listen. I actually need to say these things. Because it makes me mad every time. If you activate a card, right? And your opponent flips over something. And your card gets negated. Would you not investigate? Would you not look into the situation and be like, Okay, why did my card get negated? And then you look at the card I flipped over. And you go, Oh, when a spell card is activated in the same column as a jackknight, it gets negated. So maybe I shouldn't play my spells in the same column. As his, as his knights. But no. Apparently reading cards is a fundamental key point of this game. You're playing a game based on reading cards and coming up with strategical ways to deal with those cards. But you just don't read cards. I don't get it. Anyway, that's that's gonna be it for this one. Like I said, I've got to do a bunch of filming. I've got to get a bunch of things, you know, ready and get them uploaded for ARG Orlando that I'll be at this weekend. If you're there and you want to like say, hey, I'll be there both days. Come walk up, say hello. Don't be afraid of me. I'm not gonna shit on you. I'm not gonna judge you or anything. Just come up and be cool. That's the biggest advice that I can give people. Don't overstay your welcome. Don't be like really pushy and just be like, I want to hang out with you all the time. But if you come up and you say hey, and we chat and we have a conversation, it's not uncommon for me to invite people that I've been chatting with out to dinner, or to like hang out, or out to lunch, or whatever. I have got a growing list of people that have I've taken back to my hotel room. I've been like, hey, let's go grab my car and let's go get some food. Let's go get some pizza or something. Because I've just been hanging out with them, and they're cool and they're chill. Like, just be chill, bro. But anyway... I, I can't deal anymore with this. I need to take a little break before I actually have a mental breakdown from how much people just don't like read cards and they just leave and all this stuff. I just I can't stand the Yu-Gi-Oh Pro community today or at all apparently in general. So it's kind of a weird community. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, links as always are down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly, if you really like my content and want to support it, then Patreon is the best way to do so. And even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support. And you'd have my eternal gratitude if that's something you'd like to do. But otherwise, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. And basically, thanks for your time as usual, guys. I mean, without you guys sitting here watching my videos, I wouldn't be making them. So thank you so much for that. But otherwise, take care. I'll see you in the next video. So now the video is over. As usual, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a ton, way more than I could ever express. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.